see the note from the pastor? Yes. Do you see where it says, please do the pastor a favor? Yes. Amen. Amen. I wish that right now you would just hug somebody right now. Amen. Just hug somebody right now. Amen. Hug somebody right now. Tell them you love them. Amen. Tell them you love them just because. Y'all might have just read it and thought it was just something to read. <laughs> but but we, we want to put things in action. We, be ye not just hearers of the word, but be ye doers also. Amen. Amen. And that, that's the atmosphere we want to have here. We're family. We love each other. We might not agree on everything. Um, we might even disagree on some things. But at the end of the day, we're all family, and we love each other, and we're going to be there for each other for whatever we stand in the need of. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why we pray for each other. Amen. Amen. So we want to just promote that atmosphere here. So I, I think everybody feels good now. Amen? Right? Nothing yeah. like a hug can make you feel good. The spirit was already in the place, so it's time for the word. Amen? Amen. 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 So I said it's time for the word, but somebody else might think it's a different time. What time is it? I'm talking to you. Thank you. I'm talking to you. Spirit filled harvest time. Amen. Greater harvest, what time is it? It's harvest time. It's harvest time. Bible based preacher. A Bible based preacher. And this is a Bible based church. Please stand to your feet. As we're going to read from the word, from the book of John, the 12th chapter. Amen. We're going to read verses 27 through 33. Amen. Amen. Let's read together. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. Then Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This said he, this he said, signifying what death he should die. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you for this blessed week of revival that you've given us, Father God. Father God, please keep us revived, Father God. And Father God, speak through me, Father God, and decrease me, and but increase in me. Father God, hide me behind the cross so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight because you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, now, after this blessed week of revival yes, yes. and the blessing of the wonderful men that came here to bring the word of God and bring the glad tidings of the good news of Jesus yes. Christ, it's only fitting today that we celebrate the Holy Spirit and his presence in this place. Yes. Yes. We have truly heard words from on high and yes. now we can celebrate together the fellowship of the churches, the yes. saints who came to this house of God yes. to care for us. So, so, so rather than close out our revival with an ending sermon and cut off the flow that God has going in our, our building right now, God, God's given us a word from on high that's, that's going to help us to continue to enjoy his presence in this place. See, God sent me here this morning to encourage you, saints. And I came here to give you a word that's going to send some soul stirring this morning. Now, now, from these blessed words of life that you heard and we read together, with the aid of the Holy Spirit, God told me to tell you this morning, I have a reason to praise him. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, I got a reason to praise. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get right to it. See, now, when we look at the scripture that we read together, we examine it for its application value. The first thing we've got to look at is the context. See, this scripture comes from the Gospel of John, and, and, and Gospel of John is different from the Synoptic Gospels in several ways. Now, the Synoptic Gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But the most important thing, however, is the fact that this gospel is the last gospel written. And it's, the purpose for this writing is that uh, John is writing this gospel to convince the believers that Christ is the Messiah. Yes. See, the other gospels were written to create believers. But John was written to those who already believe. And his job was to prove the deity or the godness of Christ. And since John is the last gospel written, it doesn't repeat a whole lot of the uh, miracles that, that you see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, it has unique miracles. But with this in mind, let, let's look at the text. Now, in the 11th chapter, Christ gets the information that Lazarus is sick. And Lazarus and his two sisters, Mary and Martha, are friends of Christ. And it's intimated in, in, in the scripture that they're, uh, they have a relationship with Jesus. So when Lazarus becomes ill, uh, his sisters send a messenger to Christ to tell him about Lazarus' illness. But see, but the reality is they're not just sending somebody to tell Jesus something. They want Jesus to come and heal their brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. But those of you who know the scripture know that rather than come, Jesus simply says, this sickness is not unto death. All right. But his sickness is for the glory of God and for the glory of his son. And for two days after getting this information, Jesus stays where he is. And we learn from the text that Jesus must have been a great distance from Judea because it was two days journey for him to get back to Bethany where Lazarus was. You see, Christ had retreated beyond the Jordan because the last time that he was in Judea, the Jews had sought to stone him. So when Jesus tells the disciples, he says, I'm going back to Judea, uh, they became concerned. Uh, you see, folk don't want you to go back. Folk that love you 
don't want you to go back somewhere where people were trying to hurt you. So, so Jesus had to tell them that Lazarus' sickness has a purpose. Mm. Y'all missed that. See, see, every sickness is not unto death. Sometimes a sickness is to get somebody on their knees. Get somebody focused back on Christ. Mm. So, so, so there was a purpose for Lazarus' sickness. And the purpose for Lazarus' sickness was for Jesus to resurrect him. Jesus had to wait until the proper time. So everything that God intended to happen could happen. Mm -hmm. See, beloved, here's what happens. We often want God to do what we want him to do when we want him to do it. Am I right about it? We try to rush God sometimes. But see, God's time can't be rushed. What God plans for our purpose has to take time to develop, but because we're impatient, uh -huh. we want to rush God. We want to do things in our time. Yes. See, see, but here's what happened. God will say, you know what? I'm going to bless you, mm -hmm. but by blessing you at the right time, not at your time, but at the right time, yes. somebody else is going to be blessed too. Yes, yes. Hmm. So Jesus sets out to go back to Bethany and Judea. Mm. But before Jesus gets to Bethany, he, another messenger comes and tells him Lazarus has died. Mm -hmm. and, and by the time Jesus gets to Bethany, Lazarus has been dead for four days already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when he gets to the house, Martha comes out. Martha says, Martha tells Jesus, she says, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now we can tell from that statement, obviously Martha was in the second stage of the five stages of grief, which is anger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, 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 she said, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yes. But see, uh, Martha must have came to her senses and recognized who she was talking to. Because her next statement backs up off of that anger a little bit. And she says, I, I, I know even now, though, whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, I ain't mean to snap at you like that. <laughs> you know, I was just feeling some kind of way because my brother died. Mm -hmm. yes. But see, what we understand from that is Martha, even through her grief, she still has faith in God. Yes. Yes. And she still knows that Jesus is able to get a prayer through. And Jesus says to Martha, he says, listen, he says, your brother will rise again. Come on. And Martha says, I know he is. I know at the resurrection, you know, all of the, all the dead in Christ are going to rise again. I know he's going to rise again at the last day. And Jesus, then Jesus reveals his purpose and the purpose of Lazarus' death. And he says, he says, he says, no, I am the resurrection yes. and the life. Yes. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And, and whosoever believeth in me shall never die. And then he asked Martha, he said, do you believe this? Martha says, yes, I believe thou art the Christ, the Son of God. Then Martha leaves. Martha leaves. But now here comes Mary, her sister. And Mary's crying. And when she sees Jesus, she says the same words. She says, if you was here, my brother wouldn't have died. But the difference, there's a difference between Mary and Martha. Because, see, see, when Mary comes, she comes with a crowd of folk. Mm -hmm. She comes with a crowd of folk. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See, 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 now, now, the human. See, here's what happens. You can be all right. You talking to somebody about the death of a loved one, you could be all right. But when the crowd comes around and everybody else is crying, it's going to turn something in you, you're going to start crying too. Yeah. So the human 
part of Christ shows up and Jesus wept. Mm. Remember that scripture? You just in Sunday school in the old days. And everybody, everybody had to do a Sunday, a, a Bible verse. He would say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then he was, Jesus wept. And then you get about five Jesus wept in a row. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Because it was the shortest one. That's where it came. That's where it came. But, but in that 11th chapter, the disciple Jesus loved, John, who wrote the book of the Gospel of John, he shows the compassionate and human side of Christ when he shows him weeping at the death of his friend. But, but watch this. He shows his human side. And then a little bit later in that same chapter, he shows his God side. Mm. See, 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 you know, you know the rest of the story. He 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 resurrects Lazarus yeah. from the dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only God can do that. Yes, he was human, he cried, but he was God enough through his tears to raise somebody up yes. from the dead. Yes. Yes. Human and God at the same time. And that's what John was proving. In the, when he wrote his gospel. Now, 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 here's what happened. The Bible tells us that after that, many, many of the Jews who had seen what Jesus did believed on him. Many. But see, there you go. See, many means not everybody. Hmm. Now, let's pause here for a moment of clarity. See, because, see, see, Jesus had revived the dead before. Mm -hmm. But the difference in Lazarus being brought back to life was, see, Lazarus was in the grave. Mm -hmm. He was buried already. So what Jesus did for Lazarus was not a revival. It was a resurrection. There's a difference. See, we had a revival because we're still here. We ain't been buried in the grave. We still here. So we didn't need to be resurrected. We just needed to be revived. There's a difference in a revival and a resurrection. Now, now the Bible also tells us a little bit later, the scripture says, some of them, those that did not believe, or those that, that uh, had another agenda, they went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Mm -hmm. See, there's always going to be folks yes. Yes. Come on, come on who have the spirit of being a busybody. Yes. Turn your neighbor and say, please don't let it be you. Please don't let it be you. But there's always somebody. I don't care how wonderful things are. Say it. There's always going to be somebody who's going to have something bad to say. Yes. Say it. Always somebody who wants to stir the pot. There's always somebody who can't keep their mouth shut. So, so some of these witnesses decided it was a good thing to tell the Pharisees about the resurrection of Lazarus. Now, now Jesus had, had escaped stoning previously, and now he's back, and he's now creating even more believers with his wonders. So the Pharisees get together, they have a meeting, and, and they have to deal with the idea that Jesus is a problem that they can't solve. And the solution to their problem, kill Jesus. See, watch this. See, see, people who can't figure you out, they'll want to take you out. People who can't beat you, they're going to want to eliminate you. People who are threatened by you will want to destroy you. People who can't handle you will want to put their hands on you. 
But the reality of this matter is, the bigger your burden, the bigger your blessing. The harder your trial, the more glorious your triumph. And the longer you have to wait, the more grateful you are for the victory. Yes. Now, 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 I told you this background so you can understand the depth of the text that we read into your hearing. We read together. Mm -hmm. See, our focus verse is verse 32. And Jesus is talking about what God has in store for him on the cross. And Jesus is explaining to the disciples what plan of salvation, what the plan of salvation was. And see, this is a great example of, of God taking things that people mean for bad or mean to destroy you with and turning it into something that God can get glory for. See, the Pharisees, they were in agreement that something had to be done about Jesus. More and more people were believing in him and more and more people were being converted. And watch this. On the previous Sunday... Folks had lined the streets singing Hosanna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hail to the king. Yes. Folks were laying down palm branches and laying their clothes in the way. And this was symbolic of the reception of a victorious king. And the Pharisees and Sadducees who could not agree on anything came together to eliminate the problem of Jesus. Now, now, the key scripture that sets up this whole uh, lesson this morning is John 11 and 48. It's where the chief priests and the Pharisees, they say, uh, I'm going to read it to you. You can, you can read along with me, but I'm going to read it to you. The Bible says, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans, watch this, shall come and take away both our place and nation. See, their concern was not about Jesus misleading the people. Their concern was not about their salvation. Their concern was about them being moved out of the place that they were used to being in. They were trying to protect their own status. See, you got folks in the world who'd rather you do whatever you gotta do. Just don't mess with what they have. They don't want to be uh, taken out of their position. Whether you right or wrong, they don't care. They just want to continue to be where they are. And that's how these Pharisees and Sadducees were. They didn't care what Jesus was preaching. They just wanted to keep living high on the hall. They didn't care about the welfare of the people. They cared about their own status. See, uh, we talked before about this. Pharisees and Sadducees, they church folk. <laughs> they church folk. See, they knew the law back and forth. They knew it upside down, side. They knew the law. And and watch this. Their main accusation was, oh, we can't, we can't listen to him. He's a blasphemer. Talking about Jesus. We can't listen to him. He's a blasphemer. But watch this. They get in trouble. They forget all about the law, all about the commandments. What's their response? Kill them. Wait a minute. Ain't one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill? Yeah. <laughs> How you want to accuse the man of blasphemy and your response is to kill him? <laughs> Too many hypocrites. <laughs> Too many hypocrites. Too many hypocrites. And I'm not talking about Greater Harvard because we don't have none of them in here. We don't have none of them in here. Amen. We take a sip of water. Because, see, some hypocrites. Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> but, see, church folk, they want you to be holy. And they'll challenge you, they'll chastise you, they'll talk about you, they'll do all of that things when they're doing the same thing you're doing and worse. Yeah. 
If they think you've done anything against tradition, they want to hold it right, hold it against you. But they see, they say, "Oh, the rules apply to you, but not to me." And if you call them out on it, they'll cuss you out in the church. Or oh, some churches not great at harvest. They'll want to fight you. See, they're more concerned about their position than they are about the welfare of the church and the body of Christ. They care more about who they are in the church than they care about kingdom building. You got more folk, you got some folk in the church more concerned with their title in the church than they are with saving souls. I ain't talking about nobody here in Greater Harvest. There ain't nobody here like that. If you go to another church, though, you're in trouble. So, the Pharisees, they didn't care how obvious it was that Jesus was the Messiah, and it was obvious. Uh, but they didn't want their status in Roman society to change. So, the Savior of the world was expendable. And the last straw, so to speak, was when the Pharisees found out that not only were the Jews believing, but in the 19th and the 20th verse of chapter 12, we, we find that the Pharisees discover now that even the Greeks are coming and believing. And that Greeks are coming and they're asking to see Jesus. Now that brings us to our focal verses. See, see, Jesus knows that there's a warrant for his arrest. And the Pharisees have sent notice to the people. They say, hey, look, if you see him, let us know. Let us know where he is. We got to catch him. If you see him, let him know. Anybody who knows the whereabouts of Christ should tell us. So, so when Jesus perceives all of these things and he knows that he's wanted man and he knows that that there are people looking for him. Now he sits down with the disciples and he explains to them exactly what's going to happen. And in the verses that we read, verses 27 and 28, that's a prayer from, from, from Jesus to the Father. And Jesus asked the Father, he says, spare me from this death. See, the human side of him wants to be spared the pain of his passion. But, but as quickly as he makes this plea uh, for a pass, he then ex still acknowledges what must be done. He says, I know this is what I was sent to do. Mm. See, praise God. See, some of us are okay with God's plan as long as it's easy. <laughs> but as soon as it's a bump in the road, we get ready to bail. Uh, but, but, but the beauty of this lesson is we hear the Savior ask God for a reprieve. See, it's normal to get weary and want to quit. Yeah. It's even normal to ask permission to quit. Mm -hmm. But those who understand what it takes to finish our assignment mm -hmm. yes. never quit. That's right. We just give God the glory and keep pressing on. Yeah. And what happens after Jesus asks God to glorify his name, God responds. And when God speaks to the people, the people hit thunder. Jesus says, this was, this was not for me. That thunder wasn't for me. It was for you. See, Jesus, see, I'm always in communication with the Father. That thunder that you heard, that was for you because you're not always in communication with him. That's what Jesus tells the disciples and the people that are around. So now, now, now. Jesus tells the disciples what's going to happen to him and how he's going to defeat the devil, the prince of this world. He tells them, he says, the prince of this world is going to be cast out. Now, now watch this. In the book of John, written to the believers to show the deity of Christ, Christ tells the people that he has judged the world and it's time now for the enemy to be defeated. 
Can y'all pray with me just for a little while so I can just go a little bit deeper? A little bit deeper? See, when I look at the, at the focal verse of this text, I got to admit I was a bit taken about. I, I, I said, I don't, I don't get this. See, because when it comes to interpreting the Bible, I'm very literal. And, and in the 32nd verse of our text, Jesus says, if I be lifted up. And the word that jumped out at me was if. See, my wife would tell you I'm very anal. Everything I, I inspect stuff. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm real, real detailed. So when I saw that word if, I said, wait a minute. If this was the will of God, why would Jesus say if? Think about that for a moment. Why would the king of kings be unsure about what was going to happen when it came to the salvation of the world? Why would Jesus not know? He didn't, wouldn't have to say if. Right? If. And I said, well, let me look at these different commentaries, yes. the surveys. Mm. But, but I'm going to tell you, the, the answer that God gave me didn't come from any commentary. Mm -hmm. didn't, didn't come from Matthew Henry or, or, or John Wesley or Schofield or Gill or none of those Bible scholars. Mm -hmm. See, the explanation for the word if came from the Holy Spirit. See, you got to remember that Jesus already knows the thoughts yes. of the Pharisees. And they had the mind to kill him and kill him by crucifixion. Now, now, here's something that, that I'm going to help you with today. See, we sang the song, Lift Them Up. We sang the song, Lift Them Up. And because of that song, I believe, we have an incorrect interpretation of the scripture. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me break that down. See, we have taken the inspiration of the word and replace the interpretation of the word. Mm -hmm. See, we've taken the literal and replaced it with the metaphorical. What does that mean? See, verse 33 tells us when, when Jesus says in, in verse 32, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. It doesn't mean that our praise is going to draw folks to Christ. Mm -hmm. See, verse 33 clearly states that it was to signify what type of death he was going to die. Uh, I don't know if y'all still got it. Let me go a little deeper. See, see for a crucifixion, uh, 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 the Roman soldiers, they would dig a hole. And then they would get a tree. And they would lay the tree on the ground. And then they would take the prisoner and they would lay the prisoner on the tree. And then they would either bind his arms and feet, or in the case of Christ, they would nail, they nailed him to the tree. Now, once this was done, then they would take the tree, one on each side and one at the top. They would take the tree and put it in the hole that they dug and lift it up from the ground so that the person would hang from the cross. Uh, that's what Jesus is talking about. If I be lifted up, he's talking about if I be lifted up from off of this cross okay. to be hung. All right, all right. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about us praising his name. He's talking about being lifted up from the ground uh -huh. to the cross. All right, all right. And see, what happens is when you, when you have your arms stretched out like that mm -hmm. and, and you're hanging, literally hanging from your arms, and your feet, you can't breathe. Uh -huh. You can't breathe. So you have to lift your body up to get air in. And, and people that hang from the cross would be up there going, mm -hmm. and get a little breath. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why if they hung there long enough, they would break their legs because then they couldn't use the strength to breathe anymore. Mm -hmm. See, hanging is a suffocation. Yes. Yes. It's a suffocation. And sometimes if the, if the Roman soldiers were extremely cruel, they wouldn't even break their legs. They'd make them hang there for two or three days until they die. So when Jesus says, if I be lifted up, mm -hmm. he's talking about the manner of his death. Right. See, see, we've taken, yeah. over the years, we've taken an inspirational point 
And we've taken it from what it literally means. Mm. Although it's a great thought, it's not accurate. Thank you. Thank you. But let, let's get back to it. Can we get back to it? Let's get back to it. See, the reason why Jesus says if is not because there was any doubt about the crucifixion. See, we don't serve an unsure God. See, if, <laughs> if was a warning to the enemy. Mm, see, y'all missed that. See, much like we warn folks today, Jesus was giving Satan a warning. See, Jesus was saying, if you don't stop that foolishness. Yes. Wait a minute. See, if you don't leave me alone. <laughs> see, how many know when somebody's bothering you, you'll say if first. Because you know they're going to continue. Yes, yes, yes. But you'll give them that if warning. First, yes. That's what Jesus was doing. He said, if you don't leave me alone. Yes. If you don't stop playing. If you don't stop lying on me, if you don't keep my name out your mouth, if you don't stop talking about me behind my back, if you don't stop giving me your behind the kiss, if you don't stop complaining about everything, if, if, if. Make it plain, make it plain. We, we know the person we talk about is not going to stop. But we like being like Christ. We give him a warning. Sometimes we don't say if. Sometimes we say, all right now. <laughs> so our Lord and Savior, he knew the enemy was not going to stop plotting, but he gave him a warning. I love it. I love it. He said, if I uh -huh. be lifted up. Yeah. Uh, in other words, if you go through with your plan, it's going to backfire in your face. Turn to somebody and say, if, 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 if you know the rest. <laughs> see, 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 Jesus knew that what they were trying to stop was going to get out of control after he was lifted up. All right. See, Jesus is saying, I was sent here to do exactly what you have decided to do to me. Mm -hmm. See, they thought they were doing something to him that he didn't want done. But what they were doing was exactly what he came for them to do. Yes. Yes. Oh, we serve a mighty God. Yes. We serve a mighty, mighty yes, God. Yes, we do. See, somebody, somebody said, Devil, <laughs> if you think you're hurting me, and you think what you're doing is going to hurt. Say it, say it. You don't know it's all a part of my victory. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. But what it is, if we apply it to our circumstance, uh -huh. it gives us a reason yes. to praise, to praise That's right, that's right. Ah, uh, because the enemy will not have the victory. Uh -huh. And even when he thinks he has us, uh -huh, say it. nailed to the tree. Yes, say as it. As soon as we are lifted up, Come on in. we have
I've got a reason to praise him. See, because the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? I've got a reason to praise him. Because he died and he now lives, I've got a reason to praise him. Thank you, God. See, I know I'm going to be better because my Redeemer lives. And some of you are wondering why folk act the way they do when the Spirit hits you. See, but let me tell you something. You might look at me and say, oh, he ain't never been through nothing. He ain't never had no trials. He ain't never had no tribulation. But let me tell you something, church. I might not look like what I've been through. But I sure been through. That's why I got a reason to praise him. Because he didn't beat me up so you can look at me and tell him I didn't beat up. I got a reason to praise him because he whatever. I felt like I was going to fall. He gave me the strength. He gave me the power. He gave me, he lifted me up. Yes, yes, yes. I got a reason to praise him. Do you have a reason to praise him? If you got a reason to praise him, give God some holy ghost. It's because we only had to be revived. We didn't have to be resurrected. See, some of us know that had it not been for the Lord on our side, we would be dead in sin. We'd be somewhere sleeping in our grave. We would be somewhere flat on our backs. We would be being viewed. Instead of in here praising God. That's right, that's right. Praise God. Got a reason to praise Him. Got a reason to praise Him. The doors of this great church are open. Got a reason. Give God praise.